Good evening and welcome to Profile. My guest this evening is a continuation of a conversation I've been having with Jean Binterbreez. If you didn't see last week's program, you'd have missed a riveting interview. Uh, you might discover when I get to talking with her just now that uh, she's a little out of breath at times and she's asking to, for me to remind you that smoking anything at all could result in what has happened to her. She has to be on oxygen 15 hours a day now. It doesn't matter what you smoke, we're going to encourage you to stop smoking. So I'm going over to join poet Jean Binta Breeze just now. <laughs> I tell you, I, I'm so drawn to this conversation, even though I've known you for many, many years, years. perhaps 40, <laughs> but you can know somebody for a long time and don't either recall the details or don't know the details. Jane, you've smoked ganja for many years. Many years. And cigarettes. And cigarettes. And I won't tell you what else on this program. Oh, Jesus mercy. <laughs> But you've stopped now for about 15 years. Yes, yes. But that didn't stop my lungs from continue to de continuing to deteriorate, you know? How did you stop? Um, how did I stop? I stopped smoking ganja because I found that it was affecting, giving me more voices in my head than I could count for, account for. And I said it to a Rasta man. I think it was in Montego Bay Market one day. I was telling him what was happening to me, and he said, daughter, I want you to know that ganja is a university. And when you graduate, you must not hang around the campus. So he said, oh, all right, well, me done with that now because I graduate. Profound. Mm -hmm. Profound. Yes, ma'am. And then you moved on. But then I was still smoking the cigarette. That was, you know, it's harder to quit. Um, cigarette and to quit ganja. Cigarettes is a hard, oh my God. The nicotine what, there. What and, an, and the additives. Uh, what know? an addictive substance. It is hell to try and stop that. And it was when I went into hospital in England after two strokes, two strokes and in a coma for five days. And when I came out, my son looked at me and said, Mommy, you just spent three weeks in a hospital and no smoke. Do nobody start again. And that was the end of my cigarette smoking. But it took two strokes in a coma for five days and a son who was in tears to stop me. And I'm glad you are where you are now. Me dear. Clean. <laughs> yes. Uh, you went to England um, around about 1985. Yes. But, but the invitation to England came about 1983. Yes. Muta yes. again was in the picture. Yes, me dear. We were recording for the Woman Talk album, the one that me and Miss Lou on that album. And we were rehearsing down at High Times in Kingston. And Linton Crazy Johnson was in the country and Muta invited him. And I was reciting, I was record, um, I was rehearsing Aid Travels with a Bomb, watch out. A-I-D. Like, you know, the IMF. Yes, financial yes, aid, yes. A-I-D. Travels. Travels with a Bomb, watch out. And when Linton heard that, it was on the basis of that that I was then invited two years later to the International Book Fair of Third World Black and Radical Books in London. And then I went on to tour the world with Linton and then to tour the world by myself. Let <laughs> me bring you back though. Before you went uh, to tour the world and to, to relocate yeah. to England in 1985, you then took over the job that the late Barry Johnson had at the Jamaica Cultural and Development Barry Commission. Barry Johnson had taught me as a young girl in Sandy Bay Primary when I was entering festival. I used to enter festival chanting Miss Lou poems, you know. And Barry was there and to, to, hand, to hand over to me I was like, wow. So you're the national coordinator national for speech and drama. National coordinator, yes. And I introduced the, the category for dub poetry in the syllabus. And that year, you know, in the finals at the Ward Theater, I invited Muta Baruka to be the guest artist so the children could see him perform. And in 2019, I believe, Muta was honored by Ari and he invited Me you. <laughs> I was so honored. <laughs> So let's go to England. So you got to England where you had an opportunity to lecture. You're teaching at Brixton yes. College. Fill me in in England in about I two minutes. I taught for two years full time at Brixton College Theatre Arts. And uh, 
I was getting so many performances, bookings for performances, that I couldn't keep up the, the full-time teaching. So I went freelance and then just occasionally did writing workshops with students.